Hello and welcome to another episode of Office Hours. I'm Stuart Newsom, your host. And today we have a real treat for you. Uh, I was able to sit down with Christine Coronado, our Chief of Operations for our ERS division, and able to ask her and, and see what was in her head about what was the growing trend uh, with our prospects. Now, Christine oversees uh, our RCM line of business, our end-to-end -end RCM. Uh, so she has firsthand knowledge of, of what's going on, what she's seeing as far as denials, uh, what are some of the difficulties there are out there with a lot of the practices, uh, particularly in cardiology and, and, and orthopedics. Um, and, it, and an interesting thing that she brought up right off the bat was CO252, which is the Request for Medical Records uh, denial code. Um, and so she's going to share a lot of really handy insights on how to recognize this growing trend um, and stay ahead of it, basically. You know, what remedies that you can have uh, to make sure that you stay on top of this. So sit back, relax, uh, enjoy this recording. Uh, you're going to really uh, gain a lot of knowledge from Christine. So again, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us. Um, and we'll see you next time, next week on Office Hours. Let's talk about that that very first question. What trends you know, or patterns uh, are you seeing across our customers right now that we're servicing? Well, I'll, I'll tell you that um, over the last two years, I would say, but really this last year, the extreme number of medical records requests from carriers is something I've really never seen before in this industry. Oh, wow. um, yeah, it's it's uh, really, and, and I would take one carrier in particular and say United Healthcare has really, I'm I'm sure they had to to hire a ton of people just to request these medical records, mm -hmm. and they built a portal on their website where you upload all of them. And I can tell you that they, they, these requests come in as a denial on the claim, and it's called a CO-252, and it's a request for medical records. And so when your payment posters are posting these denials, your billing staff have to be totally aware and available to see why this claim has been denied. And when you have very high volume, it, it's it's impossible. Um, right. a, 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 it really is an everyday mom and pop medical practice has, has no way to keep up with these rec records requests. And oftentimes it goes un, unanswered right. and, they don't get, and they don't get paid. And it's likely and, because of that, especially if they throw that curveball, right? Absolutely. Right? Because it's like, absolutely. you know, that, that new denial code that you just stated. Yeah. They're like, well, what is this denial code? So either well, they got to go look it up and then it's yeah. a medical record yeah. request. Well, then they go, if you don't do this within the 30 days of the date of the request, and Blue Cross Blue Shield only gives you 15 days. Oh, wow. If you're not really attuned to what is going on with your accounts receivable really fast, you're going to mm -hmm. lose a ton of money. And not only that, um, they start wondering if you're not sending records because there are no records. Well, that's obviously not the case, but but they uh. said that then it starts, it triggers an, an escalated request for records. So once you don't answer the request, they're going to amp it up. Right. And, so, and, and and do more. And so we, um, as, a, as a revenue cycle management company, we've had to beef up our, our employees just to, just to deal with this one denial. Wow. And so I don't know how regular staff, you know, that are just trying to keep up their heads above water, even, even deal with this problem. And I would tell you that a lot of the doctors don't even know this is going on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's it's and, and you made a good point there where if the if the payers find something that mm -hmm. they can hone in on, like if you're not sending in, if you're not responding, mm -hmm. um, there's two there's two problems there. To your point, that that creates a pattern where they're just going to hit it again and again and again. That's and right. Then, that's right. And then, and then the second point, the 
the longer you delay, uh, that this delays your payment even more. You know, if you're if if is let's say you best case scenario you get it resolved, but you to your point you have to do it very very quickly. Right. That's really. And if they so, don't have a portal to upload them, let's say that you use regular snail mail. Um, when you call back to these carriers that don't have portals, they never received the records. And we know that's not true, but you can't prove it because you mailed yeah. it. Same thing with a fax machine. Y you know, you, you have your proof that you faxed it, but they don't have to say that they received it. Oh, wow. See, that's yeah. just, it, it can be very one-sided. Uh, we see a lot of that going on out there. There's a and ton you know of this going on. And then, then the second prong is they've reached out to the patient and requested information, and the patient hasn't responded. Well, of course, the patient is not going to have a clue. What right, is, exactly. What and and yeah. they don't, I mean, there's a lot of times there's this, this, there's a form of questions they're asking the patient. And a Blue Cross is really good about this. They'll send you a request for information. You send it back and they never received it. So then they deny claims based on the fact that they didn't receive information from the patient. So it's just a crazy circular situation that really just yeah. is a, uh, is a mechanism to deny your claims. Yeah, and I would speculate that it is a mechanism that is intentional, obviously, but also mm -hmm. that they have made all these medical requests that are increasing. To your point, they when you stated they must have hired some people to handle this. Well, not so fast because that may have been the objective. I mean, I'm That's not absolutely. Fingers. Definitely don't want to be an advocate for accusing payers for doing anything like this. <laughs> no, but you don't. I, but I you would gotta say wonder. That, that, <laughs> yeah, it's it's almost like, well, we never got it because they you're right. They don't really have to prove that they've received it. Uh, mm -hmm. We see that even in other situations where the status of, say, a prior off. Uh, let's say, you know, we just, you know, did um, an office hours several weeks ago about, you know, sending in a stat. And if you send in a stat, then you're making it worse because the, 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 the mind frame is, oh, I'm going to send in a stat. I'm going to get back quicker. Well, it may not qualify as stat because the documentation may not be there. But basically, at the end of the day, it starts the clock over because what they can do is they can say, OK, well, we're going to make this a normal prioritization. But along the same tenor, what we're talking about here, they don't have to notify you that they That's have right. changed that status. So it's kind of the same thing. It's, it's the game of we don't have to notify you of anything. And it's interesting you say Blue Cross Blue Shield requires 15 days, mm -hmm. but it's 14 days legally uh, for them to pay a claim. Yeah, right. Even, even though, even though it's, it's all about delaying that, but it's I find that, you know, interesting uh, in and of itself, just an observation there. Well, when you look at it, it is an investment to hire a workforce to <laughs> basically request information that they know they're not going to receive. Right. Mm -hmm. For the most part. Mm -hmm. So so they are investing in it. So so you know that um, there's there's an end goal. Since they are investing the staff to request the records and right. to look, review the records and and uh, the, the, there's like a three pronged um, goal here. Let's let's deny the claim. Right. Let's request the records. Then if we get the records, we want more records. Now we want more records. Right. We want, yes, we want to yes, see. that's it. Not we just the record for this yeah, t this visit, but let's look at other previous visits. For yeah, the what led it's, up to the, to the order of this test? Well, then you got to start sending previous records. That What led up to that? Well, then you have to really be reading the records yourself uh, to see, well, what is it really that they're after here? Right. And so and a lay person, a front office person, may not be clinically savvy enough to even un understand what it is they're really asking for. Right. You're right. And mm -hmm. and where to, and where to find it. And it's and you know, it kind of all it. goes back to your documentation. Documentation is king. It's all That's about right. documentation. And 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 you know, 
physician practices should be used to that right now. You, you know, if it's not documented, it didn't happen. But that's right. Uh, to your point, they that that may happen, but where is it? That, you know, that's where good. is it located? That's exactly <laughs> yeah. right. Um, yeah. So what do you what do you think? What do you think the reason behind that is? Other other than the fact that maybe it's this game that we're all assuming to, if not outright deny claims and prevent payment, but de- delay payment. We know that probably is, it, it's safe to say, if you want to you know, point the accusative finger, but mm-hmm. what would be a rational reason why the increase in this? We, we understand the reason. You know, they want more clarity because the coding probably wasn't good enough uh, or articulate enough. So we understand why documentation would be requested, but why the increase? Why the sudden influx of the frequency? I, I think it's to establish medical necessity for the order of the test. Um, it, so if you really want to get serious and you, you want to know really what's going on with this patient, why you're ordering it, let's say, a nuclear stress test. Is it because the patient has chest pain or is it some other reason you're ordering the test? And so um, if, if it's legit, they're legitimately trying to establish medical necessity. That's what I think. Right, right. And a, lot of, a lot of uh, physicians um, may be ordering the test and it's, it's completely supported by medical necessity, but they don't understand what key words are required to establish medical necessity in their documentation. Right, right. Or paint a picture with the coding. Do you think that's it could exactly be the right. lack, lack of coding? Because a lot of people will code one code, maybe two, mm-hmm. when they send it in. But you want to, I've always said coding is the language, you know, that payers use to understand what's happening at the encounter. That's um, absolutely correct. And, they'll, and, and so if you don't have all the symptoms, to your point, you know, why are they, why, why do they need this test? You know, is it because of chest pain? Well, mm-hmm. they're at, well, I'm going to need a little more than that. So surely the patient had more than just chest pain. There probably were right. some other signs and symptoms and other comorbidities, if you yes. will, um, yes. that were associated with that. I, I think being exhaustive with your coding may help, but still there may be that ulterior motive <laughs> lying yeah. underneath. Exactly. And, you know, what What better way to deny pain for a test than, you know, asking for records, asking for more records, and then say, aha, this didn't really support medical necessity, so therefore we're going to deny the claim. And that could be months down the road. It could be six months down the road. And then you have no leverage to start the claim all over again. Because of timely filing restraints. It's it's that. It's, you know, um, you, you would have to basically um, correct the claim if there if if there was an opportunity to do that, to start it all over again. But then if you know, if this is not Medicare, it's let's say United Healthcare where 90 days, it's over. You're done. You can't you can't correct the claim at this point because it, it timely filing. Right. So I would say that um, United Healthcare probably requests records on at least 30% of all their claims. Wow. And and it could be specialty driven, right? So in cardiology, it's going to be a huge number, whereas maybe primary care wouldn't necessitate you know a, a huge list of of um requests for records but specialty driven when you're talking about orthopedics urology um cardiology th- th- it's a high number very high number so you have to have a lot more staff these days to work claims um and and like like you said documentation is king um lots of lots of education with the physicians and the providers to understand exactly what is needed to be documented and um it's just very onerous that doctors feel like they spend most of their time on paperwork instead of really um 
handling patient care. And right. it's frustrating. It's frustrating, right? And it's frustrating yeah. for everybody involved. No oh, administrative burden. Yeah. So, yeah. Yes. That, that there's legislation to try and reduce that, but I think it just adds to it as well. So, well, and then you 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 brought up um, pre-authorization. Um, ha- sometimes you can't even get the pre-authorization to to do to order the test, and and the p- ultimate person that's going to pay for that is the patient. Yep, they sure are. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's going to come back and circle back with them. So when when we look at what what advice would you give to those out there who are seeing this or going through this? Um, because because we know, you know, it's not just it's our clients; it's everyone. You know, so it's what, everyone. That's right. Yeah. What what advice well, would I you think, offer them? I, th- I think that you have to be um, understanding that you need more staff. It, it's it's you you can't really you can't go off of one basically one FTE for every three providers anymore. It's almost a one to one ratio. Is what I would wow. say. Yeah. And and, then, um, and that yeah, has sure nothing to do with. Oh, go ahead. No, I was just saying that I think that staff would have to be uh, trained as well. <laughs> and that, understand. That's it. That's exactly Make right. It. I mean, our own staff, we, we spend a lot of time every single Thursday afternoon. This afternoon, we'll have an accounts receivable meeting company wide and we'll go over all these themes and how to basically address these these issues and how do we get we how do we how do we turn that claim into revenue for for our our clients um so we do a lot of education with our own staff and then we have monthly education with our physicians um just explaining to them what is really needed in the documentation it's a lot it's 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 a lot of time that we spend doing that but it's necessary yeah. Have you seen some good results? I mean, in other words, you know, what, what have we done for our clients um, the, and the, the physicians you serve? Um, what What's the fruit of that? The fruit of that is, is when you respond with, with timely reporting of records, um, I would say that they kind of, they kind of flag you as, as the client that, you know, they're not going to request as many records from you as they might have before because you respond and you respond correctly. That's a good point. Yeah. That's, that's, that's the name of the game right there. It's not it, only, it is, and it, you know, it's yeah. sad, but it is a game and yeah. you have to play it, play it correctly. You have to give us, it's kind of like a weed that grows. <laughs> Right. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> and, it's, and if you don't pull that weed or take care of that weed, then it's just going to grow it's, and it's, it's going to multiply. It's going to go out of control. That's right. Yeah. I, yeah. I like that. I like that. I'm going to use that today. <laughs> okay. This okay. afternoon in my meeting, I'm going to I'm going to refer to these as weeds. I like <laughs> awesome. it. <laughs> awesome. Very nice. Very nice. <laughs> So with, with just a few minutes left here, you know, what if this, this one question, you know, what big bet would you make on cardiology revenue cycle and why? Like what what is the big thing that you would say, you know, I'm going to put my money on this, particularly in cardiology? Man, that's a great question. I think you go several different ways with that. Ah. <sighs> Well, you know, we're getting uh, this population that we have is getting older, right? Mm-hmm. And um, most people, I don't know about you, but most people need a cardiologist. Well, I don't they even will. Know, or will need a cardiologist. Um, as a country, we have a huge problem with obesity, right? Right. And... Um, Obesity has all of its, you know, its own problems, but but it's a real stress on your heart. Mm-hmm. And so um, I think that I think that more cardiologists might be, I don't know, incentivized to help address the obesity problem. Oh, you're right. 
get more involved yeah. in maybe some weight loss, you know, yeah. even that's more for internal medicine. You see that mainly. Well, I, 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 have, I have a cardiothoracic surgeon that's actually um, prescribing Ozempic for a big portion of his patients. Yeah. Well, as you said, it takes stress off the heart. It also yeah. probably helps improve vascular, um, you know, movement um, and um, just health and well-being. Right. You know, of, of overall health. I mean, because the, the goal is to have healthy patients. Right. It's all about the quality of care. You know, I, you know, obviously, if you're I remember the day, I think long ago, maybe cardiologists thought, well, just, you know, a heart surgeon or mm-hmm. or, you know, I want to treat the disease. So mm-hmm. just bring me cases that I can treat. But now it's more about how can I, you know, keep my patients healthy. Um, and, and live longer. I know that's the goal ultimately has been for all time, but um, I think we've gone from just where it's the patient comes in, they have a problem, we're going to fix that problem. Uh, kind of yeah. a transactional type of, a, of an arrangement where now it's mm-hmm. more of a relationship kind of an arrangement. Where, Not treating the whole patient. Right. Yeah. That was a, a great discussion. I um, appreciate you sharing those insights um, because I learned something today. well and i appreciate your 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 comments too